Shrigor Kishore Shiromani's mother-in-law was a chaste lady. <clears throat> when her husband died, she expressed her desire to become sati. Her relations tried to, to uh, dissuade her by telling her about the pain and torture a sati has to suffer. Then she dipped her finger in ghee, clarified butter, and put it on the flame of a lamp. The finger began to burn like firewood. Showing the finger to her relations, relatives, she said, See how it burns, but it does not give me any pain. Then, after circumambulating seven times the burning pile on which her husband's corpse was laid, she jumped into it. Even today, the place near Buskara station in Vardaman district, where she became Sati, is known as Sati Danga. Before jumping into the burning pile, she said to her people, when my daughter Ram Dasi comes of age, you marry her to Gaurachandra Shiromani, the son of Dhana Krishna Chattopadhyaya of village Chitahati in Tahishila, Katoya. At that time, Ram Dasi was one and a half years old, and Gaurachandra was a young boy who went about seeing theatrical performance and had little to do with reading or writing. Obviously, Ram Dasi's mother had by her supernatural power seen in Gaurachandra a Siddha saint in the making. Ram Dasi was married to him when she came of age. After the age of 20, Gorachandra had not even learned alphabets. One day, one of his neighbors said, Dora, it seems you will remain illiterate and a disgrace to your family. From that very day, he became restless for learning. After learning the rudiments of the Bengali language from some pundits, he went to Katoya and joined the Tola, a Sanskrit school of Panchanana Tarkaratma. Later, he learned all the Bhakti Shastras from Sakicharan Das Pandit Baba of Katoya and became famous as a pundit, well versed in the Shastras. He began to live in the Natya Mandira, a hall in front of a temple, of Mahaprabhu's temple in Katoya, and started teaching. He also took Diksha Mantra from Siddha Sri Chaitanya Das Baba of Navadvi and started bhajan. From early morning, until uh, until two o'clock in the afternoon, he spent his time in Kirtan, Nam Japa, and Lila Chintan, meditation on Lila. After that, he cleaned the path to Ganga and the place which was which was used by the Vaishnavas as urinal. Then he bathed in Ganga went to Mahaprabhu's temple for darshan, 
made obeisance to the Goswamis and Vaishnavas assembled in the temple and took a particle of their prashad thrown in a pit outside the temple. As for his meal, he boiled four handsful of rice, added a little salt to it, and ate after offering it to Mahaprabhu. In the evening, he taught Srimad Bhagavatam and other Shastras to students. The pandits, with one voice, acclaiming King of the Pandits of Katoya and the surrounding area. The Tantrika Pandits of Kagram of Murshidabad district got jealous of him. They invited him to Kagram for Bhagavad Path with a view to humiliate him. The path was arranged near the Vishnu temple of Kagram. On the third day of the path, the pandits arranged for Pashubali, an animal sacrifice for Kali Puja, instead of path at the same place where path was held. After Kali Puja, when they began the sacrifice, every time they had to strike the animal with the sword twice. This was an evil portent. So they tried to propitiate the goddess. At night, the goddess told the Pujari in a dream, you have insulted a Vishnu Bhakta. I shall kill you. The Tantric pundits were very much frightened. They went to Shiromani Mahasheya, apologized for their misdeed, and requested him to do something to save them. Shiromani Mahasheya asked them to go and bathe in Ganga and chant Harinam. The pandits, the tantric, obeyed. They bathed in Ganga and pleased the goddess by taking initiation in Harinam from Shiromani Mahasheya. After some time, Shiromani Mahasheya went to Vrindavan and began to live in a house near Kashigat which even today is known as Shiromani Kunja. In Vrindavan, he used to teach Bhagavat to the Vaishnavas in the afternoon. An old Vaishnava, whom nobody knew, came to attend the Bhagavatam path every day, just when the path began, and went away immediately after the path but, sorry, without giving an opportunity to anyone to inquire who he was and where he came from. But he listened to the path with utmost attention. One day, when Shiromani Mahasheya was describing the Daksh Yagya mansion in the fourth canto of Srimad Bhagavatam, one of the Vaishnavas asked, how could Sati burn her body by yogic power? Before Shiromani Mahasheya could say anything in reply, the old Vaishnava, who never spoke a word, said, do you want to hear or to see how she did it? The other Vaishnava said, who would like to hear if he, uh, if he can see? The old Vishnava then said, all right, see. <coughs> he sat cross-legged facing the north and said, Jai Gore. 
and began to meditate. After a little while, fire blazed out of his great toes. Slowly, it began to spread all over his body. Oh, what a tragedy! The Vaishnavas tried to extinguish the fire by pouring water, but they could not stop the flames, and the body of the old Vaishnava was soon reduced to ashes. We have said before that in Raj, many Siddha Mahatmas who left their physical body hundreds of years before still live there in their spiritual body and help remove the doubts and difficulties of the sadhakas. The old Vaishnav might have been one of them. Shiromani Mahasheya bowed down to everyone, considering him to be superior to him in devotion. It was difficult to walk along with him on the road because he would bow down to every pilgrim who came to Vrindavan. When anyone asked him why he bowed to the pilgrims, he replied, you don't know. Your devotion to Vrindavan has become still because of your nearness to it. There is little enthusiasm or zest in it. But these people live in far off places. Some come from East, ben uh, East Bengal, some from Gujarat, Maharashtra, Madras, or Multauna. In spite of all the trouble and tribulation they <laughs> have to suffer on the way, their yearning and enthusiasm for Vrindavan are much more adorable. So my head naturally bows down to them. Shiromani Mahasheya, as far as possible, never allowed anyone to do Dandavat to himself. Anyone who wanted to do Dandavat to him found him lying prostrate at his feet even before he made obeisance to him. Once Sridhar, a disciple of Vijay Krishna Goswami, went to him for darshan. At that time, he was asleep. Sridhar performed Dandavat at his feet. As soon as he got up after performing Dandavat, he saw that Shiromani Mahasheya's feet had automatically turn it in another direction. He performed turn it in another direction. He performed Dandavat a second time. This time also, he saw that his feet had turned in another direction. In this way, he performed Dandavat three times, and every time from a different direction, according to the direction of Shiromani Mahasheya's feet. And every time he found that sleeping Shiromani Mahasheya's feet had automatically turned to avoid his dandavas <laughs> while he was sleeping. <laughs> <laughs> After living in Vrindavan for some time, Shiromani Mahasheya fell seriously ill. Thinking that his life would soon end, he took Vaish Vaishnav Sanyas from Siddha Sri Nityananda Das Babaji of Madan Mohan Thakur. After Vaish, he was given the name Sri Gaur Kishore Shiromani. By the grace of Guru, he slowly recovered from illness. Siddha Sri Balaram Das Babaji then advised him to go and live in the ashram of Sri Nityananda Das Babaji. He started living there. Even before his Vesh, Gorkishore Das Babaji 
was known as a Siddha Mahatma. After his Vesh, Nityananda Das Babaji became more famous and people began to come to him in larger numbers for darshan and advice regarding bhajan. Seeing that this, uh, cre seeing that this created disturbance in his bhajan, Gorki Shorshi Romani himself sat at the gate of Nityananda Das Babaji and removed the doubts and difficulties of the people who came to see Nityananda Das Baba to their satisfaction. If anyone insisted on having the darshan of Nityananda Das Baba, he asked him to come in the evening when Baba came out to listen to the daily path. On account of the service he thus rendered to Sri Gurudeva, however, his own bhajan began to be disturbed. But this did not dissuade him from the service of Gurudeva because he considered service to Gurudev of much greater importance than his own bhajan. Besides, in course of time, he adjusted himself to the new situation and could carry on his bhajan undisturbed, even while engaged in the service of Gurudev. He used to tell the Tiagis, those who had renounced the word, that in their bhajan, they should be like the pigeon of Nabuta Khan. There is a footnote. Nabuta Khan is a place above the entrance gate of a temple or palace reserved for the musicians who beat the drum and play on uh, Shanghai. Chennai is a flute, that kind of instrument. The Nabuta Khan is usually infested by pigeons who continue to live there happily as if totally unconcerned with the disturbing sound of the drum. So he advised to the Tiagis that in their bhajan they should be like those pigeons, undisturbed and unconcerned. Sometime after Gorky Shor Shiromani had taken Vesh from Nityananda Das Babaji, Pandit Ram Krishna Das Babaji also took Vesh from him. Nityananda Das Babaji told Ramakrishna Das Babaji, Although Gorky Shor is your god brother, you should regard him as your guru. She speaks of the high esteem which Gorky Shor Shiromani was held by Siddha Nityananda Das Babaji. All other Vaishnavas also held him in high esteem. At that time, her living Vrindavan, besides Nityananda Das Baba and Pandit Ramakrishna Das Baba, a number of other Siddha Mahatmas and Vaishnavas, like Siddha Balaram Das Baba, Sri Brahmananda Goswami Pad of Srinivas, Sri Nilamani Goswami Pad, Sri Harachandra Goswami Pad, Sri Ganga Prashad Roy of Tarasa, and Sri Hajara Mahasheya. Gorkishore Shiromani was highly respected by all of them. The Siddha Mahatmas kept an eye upon all sadhakas. If they found anyone acting against the principles of behavior laid down in the Shastras for sadhus and Vaishnavas, they castigated him. Once they had to castigate even Gorky Shorani Baba for one of his lapses. The Rani of Etamapura came to Vrindavan. She was very much pleased to hear the Bhagavad path of Gorky Shor Babaji. After the path, she sent some money, fruits and flowers, etc., to him in the form of Dakshina. 
He accepted them because he did not want to hurt the Rani by refusing them. The Vaishnavas reprimanded him for this. He realized the gravity of his offense and asked for punishment. The Vaishnavas ordered that he should do Bhagavad Path in each of the temples of Vrindavan within a year. The order was difficult because the number of temples in Vrindavan was large. Yet, Borkishore Baba carried out the order by doing several paths at home. Shiromani Mahasheya always swam freely in the ocean of path and the slightest stimulus made him dive deep into it. Once we saw a dancing girl returning from somewhere after a performance. The girl reminded him of a Raj Gopi and he was so overwhelmed with Bhav that he fell unconscious on the ground. One night, Shromat Mahasheya heard his guru, Sri Chaitanya Das Babaji, saying to him in a dream, Shiromani, I'm coming to Vrindavan. He understood that Gurudev had left the body to participate in Krishna Lila in Celestial Vrindavan. He was so shocked, and soon after, in the year 1890, he also followed his Gurudev. Sri Gorkishor Shiromani Ki. <clears throat> oh, something. It's very uh, one point is in my mind this lady with this uh, accepted sati ritual. She took, uh, she put her finger to the key and then burn and show. You see, it's not painful for me. Uh, one the reason why it can it can be painful because the agony of uh, separation much more high inside. What I'm thinking. Because original this come from Sati. Sati she, she faced so much separation with her beloved Shivji that she is burned to side. There was a Yogan in general, body consciousness. It came to ordinary baby. Ordinary baby, but uh, she was so elevated. So, she has no bodily consciousness, mm. a spiritual consciousness. And also, she, she, she could predict, predict her daughter she could marry this boy. And this boy is going to become Sita. Like she has some kind of mystic power. Who ha, like, you know, someone who has a uh, Sita Mahatmahas. Radhe, it's quite difficult to hear uh, Jainanda Sorry. Maharaj. So I'm saying, sorry, my voice is not good. So this, uh, this Gora Chandra Baba's, you know, Gora Shiromani's mother-in-law uh, Goza Kishora Shiromani's mother-in-law is like uh, she has a mystic power beyond bodily consciousness because burning the finger still she did not hurt it also she could predict uh, her daughter should be married with uh, this Gora Kishora Shiromani, who future he will become Siddha. So, I have one uh, question, like kind of. 
request to put share if anyone like to share his opinion. When uh, he's saying that Gorky Shore Shiromani is doing Dandava to all the pilgrims who are coming to Vrindavan, and then one of his disciples asked, Why are you doing Dandava to everyone who's coming to Vrindavan? Then Gorky Shore Shiromani said that to his disciples, which was living in Vrindavan, your devotion to Vrindavan has become still because of your nearness to it. Uh, 91. Yeah, it means that if you become too familiar with living in Vrindavan, and lose your devotion, you can lose, lose so, your appreciation. Uh, if That's I, why they cannot understand why he does dandavats to everyone who comes to Vrindavan. Uh, and that's what he, they, he told them. Yes, your devotion be, has been like, uh, you know, stand still on standby, not developing. But why this happened, like, although living in Vrindavan, why this might happen, like? Familiarity breeds contempt. <laughs> if, if, if I think it can happen in that case, then how would they told you not still blending means not absorbed in real Vrindavan. Yeah. Because real Vrindavan not given a habit like a general, not feeling is. Uh, uh, expression, a general place, but Karim Vrindavan could not give. If someone is in a real Vrindavan, what's so much of a question? then this happened it means i think in but he, this general place but he lived but under that i also need to ask question but if i'm not really in it, i'm living here What I'm from stories, maybe in the turn down, Krishna really is going on. Take a pleasure to see how the different the baby. Someone who has a Brindaba, even someone who lives with Brindaba or come to Brindaba, each person has different consciousness. I think Bhakti Vinotaku described in Vrindava different layer. Like a, someone who has like a deep, you know, some more or less material consciousness. Someone who has like a, uh, like a, how is it? Like they want to have some kind of liberation. They may have a kind of a spiritual vision, but a still by the or well, even though they practice Raganuga Bhakti, study vision is not made clear. Means some, some possibility to make offense. Then if we commit offense, then our appreciation will be decreased. Because some kind of ego is coming. Then he cannot be very humble. 
or you, may, you know, some people may say, you know, I'm Brajavasi, I'm Brahman in Vrindavan. If some, some person, you know, say, in, I'm Guru or I'm Brahman, I'm born very aristocratic family in Braja. So they may have some kind of, you know, yeah, abhima, material abhima. That person may not be very humble, may not be appreciated. So this Guru Dev could understand even disciple stay in Vrindavan, but his consciousness is not so, let's say, elevated. So therefore, Guru Dev say you don't understand. But Guru Dev's consciousness is very high. So he's very humble. He could appreciate any living entity or any pilgrimage. Because uh, one of Dharma Parada is uh, uh, committing offense to uh, living entity in Braja or some pilgrimage means that person could not appreciate as a devoted uh, spiritual elevation. That we may say, you know, even though in staying Braja, the devotee or Braja has different consciousness or different Baba. But here also maybe different covering. We also, we came, like I came, you know, like say, 35 years I am coming, but still, still some covering there. Or some, you know, you may stay more, maybe more than 10 years. You are very elevated, you, are, you may not cover it. Uh, but I understand what you say. You have to do it now on the watch list. You know, so, <laughs> so therefore, we don't know. Some of us stay in Vrindavan many years, or some come many years, but we are not sure our devotion is really, you know, mature. So this good David is saying, you don't know, because you don't understand as a, as a people's uh, uh, spiritual elevation. Because someone who is you know, very high, like Paramahansa, can respect anybody. Like Dagnat Das Goswami was, he did Dandabat, Dandabat, I think, thousand times every day. Dagnat Das Goswami meet each person, he did Dandabat. I cannot imagine every day thousand times time Dandabat. This is Paramahansa, you know, but uh, we are thinking, you know, oh, you know, we did not do so much Dandabat. This is interesting. So I'm very glad to read where I started before in chapter 11, uh, if you like. And we still have Japanese translation going, I think. See? Yes. Blessings to blessings to Ananda Prema. Thank you, dear. So we were talking about, we were just starting the Leela of uh, Gaura Charana Dasa Babaji. And I'll just start again because I only read one sentence, I think. <laughs> Sida Shri Gaura Charana Das Babaji was a descendant of Shri Lokanata Goswami, who's actually what, um, who's also the godfather of uh, Jagannath Baba, who we talked about uh, last week. He's an associate of Sriman Mahaprabhu. He was born in Talkarhari village in the district of Yasora in Bangladesh. At a very early age, he left home and went to Navadvipa. And there he took initiation from Sida Chaitanya Das Babaji. After remaining in the service of Gurudev 
for a long time, he requested permission to go to see Holy Vraj and return. Gurudev said, go, but will you be able to return? Having gone there, you may find yourself in the love trap of Krishna and Balaram. They may not let you come back. So it's actually the love that will not make you come back, not let you come back. Gaura Charana said, No, Gurudev, you may rest assured. I will return quickly after making the 84 Kosa Parikrama of Braj. Kaurachārāna went to Vrindavana. He performed the Parikram of Braj. And at the conclusion of the Parikram, he went to Mahavana and had the darshan of Dawji, the image of Balaram. He resolved to pass the night there. And at dawn, to set out for Navadvipa. During the night, while he was asleep, Dauji called him by name and said, Look, you are very dear to me. So remain here and do bhajan in the cave you see over there. Here you will attain all that you want. The devotee worships Bhagavan because he loves him. But when Bhagavan begins to love the devotee, what remains for him to achieve? What remains is the sweet game of hide and seek that goes on between the two. Gaura Charana Baba had Sakya Bhav or the Bhav of friendly relationship towards Bhagavan. Friends often have love quarrel between them. It was not unnatural, therefore, that Gaura Charana should have quarreled with Doji. I think the Doji is name of Krishna. I'm not quite sure, but I think that's Krishna. So, protesting against what Doji said, he replied, No, I shall go to my Navadvipa according to the instructions of my Guru. I will not stay here. Maybe if you like, I can pause here and comment. It's it's a very beautiful paragraph, isn't it? It says, first, the devotee worships Bhagavan. Devotee worships God, the God that we are attracted to, who has personality, who has love, who has devotion, who has longing, who has feelings. So the devotee worships Bhagavan, but when Bhagavan, now I'm reading again, but when Bhagavan begins to love the devotee, what remains for him to achieve? This is very important because in, in, um, in Western religion, in Christianity and Islam and Judaism, we love God, we're told to love God, but God is silent. We don't feel God's love back. We don't feel a relationship to God. And Gurudev often tells us that the big 
revolution that Jesus made was to give love back. So that's why Gurudev, our Gurudev is a devotee of Jesus. Because Jesus is a lover. He loves back. So he, um, in this in this Leela of Gauracharana, it's saying that well, Gauracharana loved Bhagavan, and that's very good, very respectful. But when Bhagavan loves him back, then he's becoming a true devotee. Because then there's a loving relation, a two-way loving relation between God and and the devotee, between Bhagavan and Gauracharana. And that's everything. He says. What remains for him to achieve? That's the highest level when we have a two-way loving relationship with with God, with Bhagwan. And then the next sentence is is very nice too. It says, "Well, you ask what remains. What remains is a sweet game of hide and seek that goes on between the two. Two lovers they're playing." You love me, so I disappear. Then you love me more, and then I come back. And then you disappear, and I miss you, and I love you, and I want, and my desire increases, and then we come together again. It's hide and seek. It's the it's a game of of uh, love in separation, which is so important in 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 Vaishnavism. So it's this idea that we're close to God. And then we're far away from God, and by being far away, our love increases, our desire increases. So, in a way, what's standing in this paragraph, it's it's the it's the um, a simple version of the of the Vraj Lila, of Radha and Mohan playing hide and seek with each other every day. Every day they wake up, they go home to their families, then they come back in the afternoon and they play a little game of do you love me, then I hide, I want you, I don't want you, and the desire increases. And this is, this is, this happens every day from for always. And that's why we go to temple, and we wake up the deities, and then we send them home and we let them begin their their hide and seek again. So it's just to say that what Gaurachirana experienced when he went to the to Braj is very much what Radha and Mohan experience every day in the forest of Braj. This this feeling of love which increases through the playfulness of the hide and seek. So then uh, Gaurachharana is going to follow his guru's instructions and go on to the next place, Navada Nava Navadvipa. And Daoji says, I will not let you go. But with a playful smile on his face. So he smiles and says, well, let's play some more hide and seek. I will not let you go. We're going, I'm going to long for you. I'm going to keep you. I'm going to trick you. And our love will increase. Our, our desire will increase. Gaura Charana found himself in a predicament. A, a paradox, a contradiction, an impossible situation. He did not know whether he should obey his guru or doji, doji. After reflecting for a while, he said, no, no, I shall go. I shall leave this very moment. So he's going to obey his guru. Even as he said this, he sprang up, he jumped up, slung his bag over his shoulder, and set out and left at midnight. Gauracharana was marching fast, walking fast. As he was marching on, there rang in his ears Sometimes the words of Gurudev, which were, go, but will you be able to return? 
and sometimes the words of Doji, I will not let you go. The smiling face of Doji seemed to draw him back forcibly. Still, he was pushing forward with long strides, big steps. Every little while, he turned his face back to see whether Doji was coming right behind him. He was determined to stop a while and take rest. Only after crossing the perimeter of Vraj. So only when he reached Vraj would he rest. And until he got there, he had to keep going. After going a long distance, he thought, by now, perhaps, I have crossed the border of Vraj. But as the day dawned, as the sun came up, he was amazed to find where he was. He exclaimed, Oh, have I, like a fool, been only going round and round Baladeva Kund all night long? The illusion must have been maneuvered by Baladev. So he's been going round in a circle all night long, walking and walking, trying to come to Raj, and he just stays in a circle. So he stays in the love game. He stays in the hide and seek, the coming and going, in a situation of attraction to God and loyalty to his Guru. The words of Gurudev came true. Kaura Charana realized that it was not possible for him to escape the grip of Dauja, Dauji. What could the helpless Babaji do? He began to dwell in the cave, to live in the cave pointed out by Doji, and to do his sadhana there. So, in effect, he, he obeyed both his guru and Doji. He went on, but by going on, he came back. By going out, he found out where he was going, which was back at the place with, with God. So, he did his sadhana. He would get up very early in the morning, take his bath, and start chanting Rama Krishna. Adama Krishna, with the aid of a large rosary, a japa. He would go on chanting until afternoon. Then he would come out of the cave, again take a bath, and sit down for reading of Srimad Bhagavatam and other scriptures. At dusk, he would go begging for food. He would converse with no one nor would he go anywhere else. For 20 years, he did the bhajan in this manner in his cave. His absorption in the chanting was so deep that even while asleep, he could be heard chanting Rama Krishna. Dhamma Krishna, Dhamma Krishna. Gaurachanda, 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 not Gaurachanda, Gaurachanda Baba, had the conceit of being the younger brother of Sri Dhamma and the elder brother of Radharani. So he had the conceit, that means he had the advantage, the secret advantage. It is believed that Daoji used to go to his cave and feed him with butter and sugar candy. After some time, Gaura Charana's reputation as a Siddha Mahatma, a great soul, spread far and wide. A devout person of the Saha caste came from Bangladesh to get initiation for, from him. Every day, 
when Baba went out for begging, he saw him, saw this man, sitting outside his cave. But Baba said nothing to him. In this way, one year passed. Then one day he asked, asked him, Who are you? What do you want? Saha Mahashaya introduced him himself and said, I deserve, I desire your grace, your mercy, your initiation. What is that under your arm? said, said Baba. That is Chaitanya Charitamrita, he replied. A great book. Baba took him inside the cave and asked him to recite Chaitanya Charitamrita. And from that day, for about a year, Saha Mayashaya, Mahashaya, Saha Mahashaya recited to him Chaitanya Charitamrita every day. Think that I said, should sit here and read to you all day long, every day for one year. That's what he did. During this period, Baba gave him diksha. Later, he gave him Vaishnava Samyasa, Samyasa, and the name Shri Dayala Dasha. Dayala Dasa was the first disciple of Shri Gauracharana Das Babaji. After him, many others took initiation and Vesha from him. At the time of hearing the recitation of Chaitanya Charitamrita, Gauracharana Das Babaji used to be overwhelmed with bhav. So profuse, so intense, so strong, used to be the flow of tears from his eyes that his clothes got completely drenched, completely wet. Listening daily to the recitation, he became so engrossed in love for Gora that instead of chanting Ramakrishna, he began to chant the names of Gaura and his associates. Shri Garanga Nityananda, Shri Advaita Chandra, Gadahara, Shri Vasadi Gaura Bhaktivinata. How is it that Gaura Charana Baba, who was intensely devoted to Rama and Krishna, became a devotee of Gaura? A devotee of Gaura is, of course, a devotee of um, Krishna Radha Mohan. Was it because the Madhurya, the sweetness of Bhagavan, in the form of Bhakta, charged with Mahabhav, the great feeling, the sentiment of Radha's love for Krishna, the highest love sentiment, is even more charming than the sweetness of Madhurya, the sweetness or Madhurya of Krishna, the highest embodiment of all the rasas. I'll read that again. But listen here, what's, let's think about what happened to him now. He was loving, he was loving God, loving Krishna in one way relationship. And when he arrived at this place, he started feeling the love of Krishna back towards him. He started having the experience of God as a lover. And God is a lover. That's exactly the, that's exactly the form that we recognize in Radha Mohan. Where Krishna all through the millennia is one who's experiencing the love of others, the love of the gopis, the love of all the jivas. But when Chaitanya Mahaprabhu comes, Krishna becomes a lover and starts wanting to love and know what it is to love, and that's why he takes the mood of Radharani. 
So when Chaitanya Mahaprabhu appears, he takes the mood of Radharani and becomes someone who also loves and experiences uh, what love is. So in a way, Gaura Charan, Charana in this Leela is, is following that same progression. First, he's a devotee of Krishna in this one-way love, and then he starts feeling the effect of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. He starts feeling that a relationship to God is um, a relationship to of uh, loving and being loved, of knowing both sides of the equation, if you like. And that's what he's expressing in this paragraph. I'll repeat it now. I'll read it again now. How is it that Gaura Charana Baba, who was intensely devoted to Rama and Krishna, not Radha, but a Rama, so this, this one-sided view of God, he became a devotee of Gaura. Gaura is, is um, Radha Mohan. Was it because the sweetness of Bhagavan, the Madhurya, in the form of bhakta, in the form of emotion, emotional devotion, charged with Mahabhava, the great emotion, the sentiment of Radha's love for Krishna, the highest love sentiment, is even more charming than the sweetness of Krishna, the highest embodiment of all the rasas. So, in short, is it because Radha's love is stronger than just Krishna's love? And this experience of both sides of the loving relationship is stronger than the one-sided relationship to Krishna? And I think he doesn't answer the question here, but the answer is yes, it's stronger. It's greater, this experience of loving and being loved, as we all know in our everyday lives, is much stronger than just this one-way devotion to, an, to a silent God. And that's the traditional Vedic view of, of Krishna. Then I continue. A year later, the Yala Dasa Baba, Babaji, expressed to Gurudev, his desire to go to Navadvipa to have the darshan of his Param Gurudev, Kaura Charana Dasa. Oh, pardon me, pardon me. Kaura Charana Dasa found himself in a predicament, a problem. He did not want to be deprived of the company of a loving devotee like Dayala Dasa. He didn't want Dayala Dasa to, to leave. But after reflecting for a while, he said with a deep sigh, okay, go. I could not go back to Sir Gurudev. You go and serve him. So Dayala's Param Gurudev, the Gurudev of his Gurudev, is the one that um, Gaura Charana had left so many years before. So now he's letting his dev devotee go back to the origin. Dayala Dasa went away. But Gaura Charana could not bear his separation. He began to think that Garanga Mahaprabhu, Radha Mohan, Garanga Mahaprabhu himself had come to him in the guise of Dayala Dasa to dispense Gaura Bhakti to him. So Garachana is thinking, actually, Dayala, my devotee, is maybe Radhamohan, who came to show me this two-way love. He went about from grove to grove, shout, shouting, Dayal, Dayal, like a madman, shouting to his devotee who had left. Did Gaura Charana Baba, in consequence of his love for Gaura, because of his love for Gaura, Forget all about Ramakrishna? The question does not arise. For Gaura is not separate from Krishna. But Radha Mohan is not separate from Krishna. He is only different from or manifestation of Krishna. Radha Mohan is a form of Krishna. It's Krishna coming to us with the question, 
what is it to love? That's the difference between Krishna from the old Vedic version and our more modern version. I say modern, but it's 500 years old. Our more modern version of Krishna understood as Radha Mohan. He, Gauda, is Gauda Krishna, or the fair, comple for fair complexioned Krishna, Krishna with a fair skin, having the form and the conceit of a devotee, so looking like a devotee. He appears in this form in order to relish the madhurya, the sweetness of his own Krishna form and also to relish Krishna Prema, the love of Krishna, or the bliss of loving devotion to Krishna. So Krishna has always been the object of our love, our fetish, our admiration. But he's never known what it is to, to feel that love, to, to love himself, to relish love. And that's why he appears as Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, appears as Gaura. There was no change in Gaura Charana's Sakya Bhava towards Ram and Krishna, so his material pleasure of worshipping them. Under the maddening spell of this sentiment, one day he went to the temple of Govindaji in Vrindavan, in Vrindavan. Perchance he was reminded of Krishna's own saying in Shri, Shri Mad Bhagavatam, I follow close behind my devotee so that the dust of his feet may settle on my body and I may be purified. That's what Krishna said. I follow my own devotee. So it's a kind of switch from Krishna, the all-powerful king, to Krishna being very humble and 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 soft. So Garacharana went before the image of Go Govindaji and said, Take the dust off my feet. The priest of, of Govindaji thought he was mad. The people pushed him out of the temple. While going out of the temple, he turned his face towards Govindaji and said, All right. You push me out, but remember my name is Gaura Charana. When you come out to play in the evening, I will make you take the dust of my feet. And unless you do so, I will not play with you. So I think what he's doing here is inviting him to the Radha Mohan Lila that we all talk about so often in our practice. He says, you come out and, and, and worship me, give, give pleasure to me, and I will give back to you. Gaura Charana Baba's behavior towards Govinda may arouse our indignation. It may make us angry. But, surprisingly, Govinda enjoyed it. He always enjoys the devotee's outburst of anger in love, anger in love, more than the praises of glorification of a devotee conscious of his Aishwarya, his, lone, his um, lordliness. So he much prefers devotion from someone with whom he has a loving relation than just one-way devotion to a kind of king. This is an extreme example of Raganuga Bhakti. We know this word, we all know this word. It means um, a passion that goes two ways, a passion towards God and a passion from God. That's what uh, characterizes uh, Gaudiya Vaishnavism. It's not God as some sort of great thing that we have no relation to, but God who gives back love in as much as we give love. So it's God as loving. This is an extreme example of Raganuka Bhakti, or 
spontaneous outflow of devotion, free from the stress and strains of the moral imperative or the injunctions, the rules of the scriptures, which is prevalent in Vraj, so common in Vraj. So no more this the, the rules and regulations, that the power relations, the, the moral relations. It's pure love coming from the heart towards God, pure love coming from God to our hearts. This highlights the importance of the total absence of Aishwarya Bhav, so authority, in Raghunuga Bhakti. There can be no forcing. There can be no authority. And then we'll finish here. Very good timing, actually, if I look at my clock. After some time, Shri Gaurecharana Das Babaji went to Kunjara village in Viraj and began to reside there. He lived very long. In his last years, he resided in Vrindavan with his disciple Sri Krishna Chaitanya Dasa, also known as Raya Saheb Sri Kalyasa Dasa, in the Man Manipuri Kunj, where he left his physical body to join Sri Krishna in celestial Vrindavan and to participate in his Lila. There we have it. Adikeshav Dasa Ki Jai.